Hey friends, happy Wednesday. How are you all doing today? Holy crap, it's so nice out today. And then I think Mark told me tomorrow's gonna be cold and Friday there might be some snow flurries. I don't even know what to say. I can't keep going through these crazy weather changes. But anyway, here we are. So you know how I typically like to take a few minutes on Wednesdays when my family is at tap dance class and I try to give you guys a quick recipe, some tips, something that we're eating tonight that I can talk to you about. Well, I'll do that really quick, but I am not doing a lot of cooking tonight. We're taking it, we're trying to keep things really quick and easy. So let me just share with you. Here's what we're doing. I am doing, there's three things for dinner. We're having turkey sausage. So I bought a package of sweet Italian turkey sausage. It's honeysuckle brand. It's so simple. I have it boiling in water. That's Mark's preference to boil it first. And then we'll just do like a quick, just heat it up in the pan. It's gonna be awesome. Mustard is great on those. It's it's packed with protein. The turkey sausage is really good for you and it's something a little bit different. And then I'm just doing a side of veggies out of a freezer bag. It's so simple. Not everything has to be like chopped and cut and peeled. Get frozen vegetables. Get them plain and then you can season them yourself. So I know Mark Smith is not going to be extremely happy because he's not crazy about Brussels sprouts, but we're running a little low in the frozen veg section, so Brussels sprouts it is. And I'm doing a frozen sweet potato french fry. I mean, simple people. Like, yeah, it's really nice sometimes to make like fresh cut sweet potato fries or even um, butternut squash fries. But like, I just, we just didn't this week, we made other things. And I always like to have a bag or two of these on hand because why make your life harder when it's during the week? This takes like 11 to 12 minutes in the toaster oven and everyone's gonna be happy with this french fry. Carbs are our friends. We don't have to avoid them. You don't have to cut them out. I don't even encourage that because they're a vital part of um, what you need from nutrients during the day. Sweet potatoes are a superfood. So are regular potatoes. We just happen to like sweet potatoes and that's what we're having tonight for dinner. But here's what I wanna talk to you about, okay? The title of this is about what not to do if you want to stay on track with healthy eating, if you're dieting, if you're just trying to get healthier and avoid things because look, it is hitting us again. I feel like every like couple weeks we have some sort of holiday which involves candy or chocolate or pastries and Easter's next. So we just got through Valentine's Day. Some of us might be just getting rid of the last bit of Valentine's candy if, you're, if you had a kid and they had school with like friends and parties and stuff. Well, here we are, Easter is upon us. And for those that celebrate Easter, you know what that means. That means baskets, that means chocolates, that jelly beans, what else? Like pies, Posca bread. Someone at work today showed me a recipe for like their family recipe of Easter bread. I kid you not, cause he's like, you don't even want to see this recipe. I, I said, well then don't show it to me, but he did anyway. <laughs> I said, what does it have in it? Lard, and yes, it did. It was like a pound, a pound of lard, a pound of butter. I mean, like, it was so gross. But it probably, he's like, it tastes great. And I said, it probably does. So that's what's coming up, okay? So now what are we gonna do? So I'm a mom, you guys know, I have Sophie, and I gotta put together an Easter basket. I mean, what kind of mother would not give their child an Easter basket, right? So I'm not gonna do that, and I'm not gonna fill it with like carrot sticks and like fruit and stuff. I'm gonna put candy in it. But here's the thing. We're also having an Easter egg hunt at our clubhouse and I have to provide candy stuffed Easter eggs for them. So I had to buy candy a couple days ago, okay? So I intentionally picked a bag of candy that I knew I would not be tempted like this. So if you have to do this for your kid's school or if you have to do this for an Easter egg hunt for your church or something else, don't, tip number one, do not buy candy that you personally enjoy. Don't do it. Don't torture yourself. Okay. So open, right? So this bag of candy is open, but I bought Twix and Milky Ways. Like I could care less like Snickers. Yeah, they're good, but like they're not calling my name and neither are these teeny tiny little three musketeers. Okay. Like look at the size of these things, but someone in this house it has a little bit of a craving and we've already busted into the bag. So tip number one, don't buy candy that you like. This would be like me buying a, like a box of Sarah's chocolates or the Easter, the Reese, the Reese's cups that are shaped in an Easter egg. I've told you this a thousand times. 
Those theme shaped Reese cups are amazing. Every shape is more delicious than the next. The Christmas trees, the Easter eggs, the hearts, they're all so freaking delicious and I cannot have them in the house. I will eat them until they're gone so I do not buy them even though I want to. Because you're tempted, you wanna buy what you like. Don't buy what you like, buy what you do not like, don't torture yourself, okay? Do, do as I say, not as I do. Because I bought, I picked out the Hershey Mini Bunnies. See the little, look at that, it's open already. I've had like five of these things. So I need to stuff the eggs and I need to do it ASAP because that is the only way that it will stop me from eating more of these. So again, the first tip, don't buy these things that tempt you. Now the second thing is, because that's special, that's like Easter stuff, okay? That's like a one-time exception. Don't buy the candy, even if you know you're giving it away, like it's still gonna be in your house and you're no, gonna know that it's there and it's gonna tempt you. So don't buy it, don't tempt yourself. On the regular, tip number two is don't buy things that tempt you. So if you're a chocolate or a sweet person, that's me, you cannot have those things in your house. I can't have cookies in this house, I can't have like brownies or cakes, or I can't have it in the house. I can't have ice cream because I'll eat it every day until it's gone. Every day I'll come home and I'll think, oh, there's ice cream in the freezer. I should eat it. And then I convince myself to eat it until it's gone because then it'll be gone. That is not correct. Don't do that to yourself. Again, do as I say, not as I do. So don't bring it into the house. Chocolate covered raisins. I did not purchase these. This is a Mark Aaron Smith purchase. And of course it's the freaking Costco size. And as you can see, Sylvie, there's like minimal left because we have been eating them. Sorry, that's Sylvie. This is not from our most recent trip to Costco. This was like two or three weeks ago, Costco. So I guess it's okay that we still have some left. But I eat these until I'm physically sick. So that's like a couple handfuls of these things and then I get sick from the sugar. Don't bring the stuff into your house. Okay, so maybe this is not your weakness. Maybe it's chips or pretzels. Do yourself a favor and don't bring those things into the house. You're going to sabotage yourself because when you get, maybe you're an emotional eater and you have a bad day at work or the kids are driving you up a wall or something happens that triggers an emotion inside of you and what do you do? You go to comfort yourself with the thing that you know is only going to make you feel worse. It is such a vicious cycle. Every time I eat these, I mentally can tell myself, I'm getting sick, I don't need these, I'm just gonna regret it, and then I keep eating them. And then it happens, then I get sick, and then I'm mad. I'm mad at myself for eating so many of them. So it's such a vicious cycle. And if you're not, there are people that can stop and then redirect themselves and say, okay, I did this, I veered off course, I just need to do better the rest of the day, the rest of the night, or start fresh again tomorrow. And then there are people that that internalize that and go completely off the rails. So you might have one bad meal or you might have one bad binge and you feel like, well, I've already, it's Wednesday, this week is shot, so now I'm just gonna start again on Monday. That is not what you want to do. You don't wanna to have to keep starting over just because you had one bad binge. Now, I haven't touched these since last week, thank God. And I, I feel better because I haven't touched them. I mean, I physically get sick because I will eat too many of these. You would think that I, because that happens to me, I would know better and yet I don't because it's the sugar in them that's like, oh my God, this is so good, Michelle, keep eating these. And it feels so good in the moment, but then you have to remember, you have to rein yourself in before you get to that point. So if you don't have it in the house, I'm not making a special trip to Costco or Kogo's or anywhere to pick up a package or a freaking jumbo size of these raisins. I'm not going to do that. That's just not something that I think about. But when they're in the house, I think about them because they're there. Or if, or if, you know, if you're a late at night snacker and it just becomes a habit, you're not gonna come in here and grab your carrot sticks out of the fridge at like eight o'clock at night when you sit down to watch TV. No, you're gonna go for your raisins or your Cheez-Its or your chips. So you just have to get those things out of the house and you can replace it with something else if you want to. So night, now I drink, I drink these flavored hot teas and they're so good and they, they actually fill me up and I feel so much better in the morning when I wake up. Say you're a salty person. 
and you just want to have a little snack when you sit down at night. Well, maybe you can try kale chips that you make yourself because it's that it's the crunch when you bake them. You can sprinkle a little salt or a little bit of chili powder or Cajun seasoning or garlic and you're getting something nutritional, but you're still satisfying that urge that you have for something salty. So that's what you are trying to do. I mean, it's an emotional response that you're having when you're going for these things. And it's hard to think about that. But that's the best advice that I can give you. Don't have them in the house. So the themed Oreos, oh good, okay, that's just my sausage. Themed Oreos, don't buy them. Do not buy them. You're thinking, oh, I'm just gonna have one. No, you're not, you're gonna eat the whole package, okay? Don't do it. Like the different kinds of Newtons that come out, there's multiple kinds of Cheez-Its and you like, just don't bring it into your house. Unless it's aligned with your goals, don't bring it. Maybe you go to a party and as a special occasion you have a handful of chips. That's different, okay? That's different. It's not in your house. It's a special occasion. It's a one-time thing where you're going to leave and those chips aren't coming with you. You don't want to have them on, on your property in the short term. Some of you might be thinking, well, I might do that, but I have kids or I have a spouse and they eat this. Well, then it's time that you have to have a talk with your family. And this is what I tell all of my challengers when we first get into a group. I'm like, okay, today we're throwing stuff out, all right? So if it's not yours, then you have a decision to make. You can either chuck it like I would. I totally, totally would throw it out. But some people can't. Like their kids will get upset. And I have things that are in this house that Sophie likes. But here's what I do. So you talk to your family and maybe you guys come up with a deal. Like maybe stuff has to go on the upper, upper shelf where you can't see it. You don't think about it. And the other, your spouse is the one that allocates that to the kids. Maybe you put it in a tote bag with a zipper and you keep it downstairs. If you have it downstairs, if you have a garage, you put it out of sight, out of mind, and you tell your family or your kids, listen, here's where your snacks are because I don't want to see it. I really need your help to hold me accountable. I just can't have it in the pantry anymore. So here's where your snacks are going to go. And you just have to be honest with them and you have to tell them. And guess what? When you do, then their little eyes are going to be watching you because they're going to be watching for mom or dad or whoever to slip up and be eaten in the snacks. So that is something you can do. You can also label it. So you can say, okay, maybe it's a box of like, I don't know, packets or something like that. Maybe you put their seven packets in here and you like, you know, so you know, like, okay, I told everyone that there's seven packets in here. So if they go in there again and count that there's six, they're going to come at you and be like, did you eat one of those packets? Cause I didn't need a packet and there were supposed to be seven and now there's six. So you have to do things to deter yourself from going down the path and getting completely derailed. You can put a picture of a bathing suit on here because it's almost bathing suit season something that's going to motivate you something that's going to stop you maybe you put a stop sign on here maybe you put a note to yourself on here that says don't do it Michelle these make you sick is that what you really want like maybe you have to tell yourself something you got to put it on here you can tape it down you can do things that will make you think about it. if you can stop yourself just long enough to think about it there's a very good chance that you won't take that next step and untwist the top. You just have to pause in that moment when the emotions are running high and you're going for it. If you can just pause, but you might need something visual to pause yourself. So think about what that is, whether it's a picture, whether it's a note, whether it's a count or like a line on here that says, Hey, here's where the raisins are supposed to be. And I just ate them down to here. That's going to send a very strong message to you and the other people in your household. Like, are you a sneak eater? You know, where you're like shoving the, like the pack of the little evidence, like in the, down in the garbage can. Come on. We're better than that. We are better than that. So we're not going to do that anymore. So let's regroup. Don't buy stuff that you like. Like this I don't like. These I do. Got to stuff my Easter eggs. Got to get them out of the house. So don't do that for special occasions. Don't buy stuff that's going to tempt you on a regular basis. If you have people in the house that have stuff that tempts you, you got to talk to them. You got to A, tell them to be watching, watching you, and then B, store it somewhere else. C, label your stuff so that you will stop yourself in the moment of weakness long enough to redirect yourself. Maybe I want to put on here, is this what you really want, Michelle? How about, you know, an applesauce pack? Or, hey, Michelle, like, this isn't what you want. Go eat your 
carrots or raspberries with, you know, maybe I can have some raspberries and stuff a few chocolate chips in them. You want to do something that's going to say, do this and not that, you, but you got to stop yourself first. All right. So that's what I got for you guys tonight. I hope that helps. I'm just trying to be honest with you. I totally contributed to this. Like Sophie probably didn't even have any of these. This was totally me and Mark. And I'm not going to lie. I was I, like, I think we wouldn't have these on this. Like, I'm not going to keep score, but we definitely wouldn't have these on this. And I am not proud of myself. So the second that these are gone, and I'm not eating any more of these, they're out of here, man. And freaking Mark at Costco, we're going to have to rein him in from here on out. So good luck. If you have any questions, if you want a substitution for your snack of choice, let me know. And we will try to come up with something. Have a good night, and I will talk to y'all later.